So this is the um, um, anima opostry competition. <clears throat> I'm just going to read to you. This is from the website. So uh, I copy pasted some things that they have on their website, but uh, at the end of this presentation, I will invite you to go visit the website. So basically you can read this again, but um, it's a call for artists all around the world to submit their works uh, for this festival uh, post, I'm sorry, for this festival poster contest. Um, and the winning poster will be used to promote Animayo 2021 or in other words, will become the identity of the festival. Um, so here I've color coded some words so we can have a little bit of uh, color in, in this sentence. So the poster will have its theme in the world of creativity, imagination, ideas, inspiration. <clears throat> and will present one or, or several of these three aspects animation visual effects and virtual reality uh, here the different colors um, just mean that i think it's a little bit more important to talk about these general big uh, concepts like creativity imagination ideas inspiration and a little less important to uh, mention animation visual effects and virtual reality <clears throat> This, uh, these posters are, um, since they're the identity, they should, I think, be a little bit more general and present the uh, idea behind the contest or behind the, uh, the festival more than um, a particular style or a particular technique of uh, either animation or whatever whatever visual reality or virtual reality or visual effects or things like this so um, first of all any type of technique is allowed so you can draw you can take pictures you can do 3d you can do collage you can do whatever you want um, there is absolutely no limit here uh, the only thing i ask and this is something uh, that is kind of imposed by the medium is that we have a digital file at the end of this uh, format, uh, sorry, uh, of this um, workshop. So we can uh, first present it and then send it to the contest. Because as you know, this is a real contest and there's real uh, a real jury. And there's also uh, some money if you win because they offer 500 euros to the winner. So it's very real. Um, and let's continue. So here, here I'm going to just show you really fast technical requirements. So the poster format is 60 by 90 centimeters. It's vertical. That's important. And there's 0.5 bleed all around. So it's basically 61 by 91. Uh, but don't worry, I've created a template document and it's in the files uh, in in this team so you can download that or if you're not working it's a photoshop document so if you're not working in photoshop you can uh, open a document like this but let's just uh, for now continue with uh, the presentation so this is the evaluation criteria for this uh, workshop before we start the actual presentation about what the workshop is so the mm, creative and work processes uh, presence during the consultations or during the uh, the workshop and uh, quality <clears throat> and originality of the final poster so these are my evaluation criteria of course you know uh, this is arts so uh, everything is a little bit relative so uh, I think if we work well and if everybody's happy at the end with the result, <clears throat> everybody should be also happy with the evaluation. Here very quickly is a link to the uh, contest page, but you can find also a link to this content contest page in the chat. Um, uh, in this group, so uh, in this team or in this group, so you can just go there and click and go to the website directly, or you can use this link. It's how you you prefer. So uh, before we start actually working, I'm just gonna introduce to you how 
um, you should begin or what we should do in the beginning so the the whole process goes smoothly so first of all um, we know this is a contest we know this is about uh, animation we know this is about virtual reality we know this is about special effects so basically we also know that you and your friends are the target audience for this poster so basically it's young people interested in animation creativity technology maybe a little bit uh, older people also are interested like for example me or other uh, professors or uh, lecturers at the school but basically we're all pretty much the target audience for this poster so when you work on it try to imagine that you're talking to your friends that you're talking to uh, people like you that you're talking to um, other artists and uh, the image that you will eventually create should appeal to these people should be something that uh, touches them or reaches them or um, allows them to identify themselves with this kind of uh, event so uh, the first thing, if you already had a class with me before, well, you will know what I'm going to say next, but the first thing that we should define or more or less uh, identify is what do you want to say? That's the most important uh, element because um, if you don't know what to say, well, how can you say it? So the idea is most important in, um, in this case. I can tell you that it's not going to be probably a very conceptual poster because this subject is um, doesn't really apply to very to a very con conceptual approach. Uh, of course, you can create a conceptual poster. You can have a very strong idea, but this uh, this image will more or less. Uh, present something that has something to do with creativity, something that has to do with the world of ideas, the world of uh, imagination. So uh, basically anything is allowed, anything is possible because this is the world of dreams, the world of imagination, the world of creativity. So there's no limits. So there's no bad ideas here. Uh, well, there are, but I will just tell you this a little bit later. So first, let's just decide that one poster equals one idea. So we create, if you have more than one idea, then we create two posters, because if you wish, you could also upload up to five posters to the contest. So um, if you want uh, to, if you have two ideas or three, we can choose one of them or you can develop more than one. But we will see about this uh, when we get to uh, to this point. Uh, I will also just give you uh, ideas that you should avoid uh, because they are cliches. They also uh, are the first ideas that come to mind. And I think you should avoid these three main ideas, or if you do not avoid them, reinterpret them in a way that will allow them to be something more than just what uh, you will see. So the first idea is a person with VR glasses and things flying around his head, or uh, elements, um, strange animals, planets, things like that. This is the first idea that comes to mind. So I would just, if uh, you have this idea, well, mm, great, but maybe there's a better one uh, a little bit further down the road. So this idea I would avoid. Uh, this one also something uh, that's connected with floating, jumping, um, diving into a world of imagination space with planets or other elements flying around. So this is another idea that is not uh, the most original. So uh, I would, if if this idea comes, I would uh, maybe sketch it, but 
eventually reject it and go to the next one. And the third one is dragons, because I don't know why lots of dragons come to mind when this um, when working on this project. So uh, these three things, well, of course, you can eventually do them, but if uh, you have something special to add, but just uh, rem remember that these are ideas that I think are pretty cliche and pretty, uh, many people will probably think of them. So if you imagine that there is um, a jury and they get, I don't know, hundreds, maybe thousand uh, posters and there's many dragons and many people with VR glasses and many people jumping in, in dream worlds where when, um, when they see these ideas repeating, they will probably uh, dismiss them and concentrate on more original ideas. So when you uh, work for a, um, a contest, also imagine what other contestants eventually will send. So you uh, prepare a strategy or prepare something that will be a, a more original or at least uh, different. So this is also something to think about when you work for for a contest just imagine that there's many people sending uh, images from around the world and certain ideas repeat themselves so maybe it's better to avoid them so here to begin really the work first of all i would like you to work or at least think in the right format so the right format is 61 by 91 and this is with bleed um, the second thing I would like you to do is think about the typography because there is typography uh, in this poster and the typography is this. So we have a title, Animayo 2021, and a subtitle, which is the 16th Summit Conference Educational System and etc. Cetera, et cetera. So these are the two uh, textual elements that we need to have in this poster. So when you start working start working with this in mind that you have to uh, place this typography in the image you can of course uh, place it on the image or you can place it in the image this is a little bit different because one implies that it's just an image and typography and the other implies that there's some playing with typography so um as we can imagine, the first most uh, classical way or most uh, simple way of doing things is like this, creating an image and then putting the typography either on top or either on the bottom. So of course, yes, you can do that. You can do that if it works with your image, if it works with your concept, but you can also play with the typography. And here I'm just showing you that <clears throat> these are two examples. Of course, this is not something uh, balanced and interesting graphically, but the, there's just two examples to show you that you can play a little bit with the typography and not stick to this traditional way of thinking. So this typography can become part of your image. Um, it can also replace elements in your image or um, be instead of elements in your image. Uh, so basically when you start thinking about ideas, when you start uh, conceptualizing, try to include typography in your thought process. So so it becomes something um, an element that is part of your design and not something that you're gonna just slap on at the end when your image is ready um, because this is kind of a, a holistic way of thinking about the poster it's a whole uh, that's composed of typography and of image uh, there's also a possibility to create a typographic poster only using typography without using any illustrative elements or any images. This is also possible. You can also use typography and make it illustrative or create an illustration based on the typography. So uh, just think about it uh, when you work, uh, how this typography will be integrated in your image. 
All right, so when looking for ideas, please remember these five things. This is a real festival, so um, it exists. It will be held this year, um, and basically it's something festive. It's a celebration of creativity. It's kind of a party. It's something that promotes talent, that promotes uh, artists, that promotes creativity and uh, things around this subject. The poster, uh, this is the second point, the poster will be the identity of the festival. So this means that this client, this festival becomes your client and um, they rely on you to create an image that will be their identity. So imagine yourself when you work uh, in the shoes of the client. If you were the boss or the owner of or the director of the festival which image what kind of image would you like to have in order to promote your festival so try to be a little bit empathic in, in the sense that don't only think about your own idea and whatever whatever you wish to do or if you have some some already idea that uh, came to your mind just think if this idea will be something that a client would accept, a client would buy um, to identify his festival. So something very, very important for him because it's the central element of his uh, visual identity. So everything, um, all the other elements will be based on this, uh, this image this color scheme, uh, the atmosphere, the feeling that your poster will emanate. So think about the idea that you eventually want to portray, but also think that this is something for someone who has specific needs. And these needs are to promote a festival uh, among young creative people. So it has to be connected. So the poster uh, in general should be positive. That's uh, the third point, um, the poster should be inviting. So it's a festival. We're inviting people to join. We're inviting people to create uh, works and send them. So something where we can eventually uh, have this feeling that we are welcome, that we are um, interested in your work, things like this. The only thing I think you should not do is scare people. So in other words, um, if you imagine yourself that you're the director of the festival, well, you probably don't want a poster that will scare your uh, clients or in interested people away or make them uh, think about bad things because you're trying to promote something positive, something uh, very mm, creative, very uh, much linked with arts and things like this. So probably scaring people is not a good idea. Sorry. So I think nothing creepy, um, nothing depressing and nothing dark uh, will work. Uh, maybe it will be a cool image. Maybe it will be something that you would be proud of, but will it serve the purpose uh, of the client? Will it serve the purpose uh, of this uh, promotional poster identity for this festival? That's the question you should ask yourself. So just avoid probably things like organs, brains, think of colors, um, also black and white, maybe not. Some colorful scheme would probably work better. Doesn't have to be a rainbow, of course, but I think something where uh, color plays a role is important because uh, color has a very, very high impact on emotions. So basically, if you want to create something uh, cheerful, positive, inviting, well, color will help you a lot. Um, so think about this also. All right, and the, uh, the deadlines. <clears throat> Today we start, uh, we have a first deadline and this is Thursday, the 28th of January at five o'clock, more or less. Mm, <clears throat> and here we we're, see whatever you have done. So um, it's a first deadline because I will present your, uh, your creations at the uh, Night of Ideas. 
so uh, it can be a work in progress. It doesn't have to be final, final, but uh, as much as possible, of course, so we can present this to the other uh, members of, of our workshop week and uh, just to, to see how, how you have uh, worked and the results that we have uh, obtained during this week. And the final deadline is the next day uh, at 11 in the morning because we have to send your images to Alexandra Hoistik in order for her to incorporate them in the virtual gallery. So these are the two deadlines. And if uh, if all goes well, it should work. Uh, of course, it depends on you and your energy. But uh, on my part, I can assure you that I'm going to be present uh, every day um, and every night probably also. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or needs for consultations, uh, I will be there. Um, we'll, once we finish the presentation, I'm going to talk a little bit about the schedule and how things work. Um, but just uh, keep these deadlines in mind so we have uh, something to show uh, the other members of our uh, um, workshop week. All right, and now the most important thing in this whole um, workshop week or in this whole creative process, and if you don't do that, well, the image or the result will not probably be satisfying to you. So the only thing uh, you have to do, this is your homework, this is something that is mandatory, well, you have to have fun uh, in order to create an image that is fun also, because as you know, images uh, transmit or translate the emotions of the creators. So the more fun you have, the more the image will have a good energy and uh, the more it will be uh, convincing and appealing to your target audience. So this is I know it's kind of uh, strange to, to, to tell you this, but this is the secret ingredient of any good image is to have some fun. 